So now we're going to Tunlin, I guess. Tunlin! By oh, the way, we are we not... the flit. Yeah, we are not 100% done with Sten, although in a normal playthrough we would be. Okay. I mean, assuming you weren't using him in your party. Okay, so one more little thing. Yep, and that'll be a little bit later. Not this particular uh, video. Okay, so now we tell the monkey to GTFO. Yeah. We go back to our real friends. Yep. Which is... Powerful armadillo husbando, your cat waifu. Yep. And oh, blah. Yep. That is correct. Blah, the most broken character. Yes. Blah tier. Yes. She is a goddess. It's very cool when games give you gods or goddesses, and then they actually feel like a god or a goddess. Mm-hmm. Oh no, we're going with like the. Beat. No, no, no. I'm just going through and talking to people after this okay. uh, event. Because that's, that's one of the cool things about this. You get a lot of characterization, not necessarily through their reactions um, in the story, but after everything, they're, they're just at home decompressing and talking about things. Hmm. Assuming Floating Fortress is either a reference to BOF1 or foreshadowing for shit you have to do later. How about both? Ah, oh, okay. I mean, you don't have to do the Floating Fortress later in this. It is actually an optional thing. Oh, cool. Is it like a challenge dungeon? No, you'll see. Okay. <laughs> no, there are no challenge dungeons in this game. Like, everything is mandatory. There are challenges you can do within dungeons, but yeah. Machine to change people's hearts and energy. Wasn't there something like that somewhere? So, uh, let's see. Where, where would you know about that from here? I I think they might have done something really stupid and given you a hint for how to do the for floating fortress thing, even though Nina would have no in-character reason to know it. Um, mm. but I don't, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember if there was anything in the storyline previous to this that she might be referring to, and I don't think there is. Did we ever resolve Nina's storyline? No. Okay. No, that comes later. I'm glad I didn't simply forget it. Yeah. Like everyone forgot about her. Right. <laughs> Man, that gets backburnered for a long time. Most of the characters' storylines do. <coughs> Like, Sten's the first one that gets resolved, which is kind of interesting. Well, I guess Bo is. Um, yeah. Like, you don't really have to do anything with him at this point forward. But after that, like... Because Bo was the whole impetus for the first, like, third half of the game. Yeah. Like that. Because you dealt with... Oh, the tent moved. <laughs> yeah. And this is its final location. Okay. It sleeps at night. Good to know. Uh, so, we've resolved Bo's issue, Uh huh. and now Bo's kind of along for the ride. Yep, and we found out about Sten. No issues were resolved, but, well, I guess his country's issues were resolved, yeah. but his aren't. He's still got issues. Uh, Jean has mostly been resolved, hasn't he? Uh, yes, Jean is resolved, but he was, he started and stopped, like, where he started and stopped all was congruous. Like, you met him and then you finished his thing. Okay. Yeah. And does Blue get anything because she's no, a secret character? she is a secret character and that's all there is. Okay. Like, you get characterization, but that's about it. So, Blue didn't have any issue. Uh-huh. Oh, poor turtle. Oh, no. No. I got spit at by a camel. How dare you? Yeah, oh, the turtle, when you feed the turtle, it's great. Oh, do it! Tom will be so mad at us if we don't feed the turtle. Yeah, yeah, well, here you go, Tom. This feed is what turtle? happened to Suarezon. Oh, it's doing a little turtle dance! Is it? No! It's a <laughs> I'm big! Holy shit, no wonder people... No wonder you wanted to play a turtle. Yeah, turtles can fly if you... If you feed them. Shit. <laughs> I'm learning so much from this game. Yeah, see the world famous dot 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 question mark? Exclamation point. 
Dude, he was so shit at his job. He should have said the invisible whatever. Yeah, there you go. Emperor's new clothes, that shit. Yeah, well, I mean, they did lose their boss. That's true. Hmm. Yeah, I don't remember what all I did in this episode, but whatever, that's fine. We'll figure it out. Onwards to victory! Yep. I mean, if I'm traveling here and not Tunlin, then that means I'm not progressing the story just yet. <laughs> I guess I'm showing shit off. Oh, I might be showing the giant island. Oh, come to think of it. okay. Yeah, if I'm heading straight down from Guns, that is what I'm doing. So that's a place that you come later, and it's like... God, that is... That is the place with the highest emotional, um stuff in this game. Okay. Like, that is where shit goes down. Yeah, there's the giant island. It's... This is an optional place. I, it's not a dungeon, but it is an optional place. Okay. Um, also, you meet here two characters from Breath of Fire 1. Mm. There's no reason for them. They're not part of the story. They don't even really say anything similar to what they said in the previous game, but when you hold the rock in your hands, you can see the bones. I don't know if that means your hand's bones or the rock's bones, but either way, it's a little odd, and I don't know what it means. You think you know us? You must be mistaken. I don't know you. So that is Bo from um, from Breath of Fire 1 and Karn from okay. Breath of Fire 1. Karn is the thief. Um, you can't really see him because he's wandering around behind a wall, and Bo is the archer kind of character. Okay. Bo is only useful at the beginning of the game and as a piece of fusion. Karn is useful the whole time through because he's the one who does the fusions. Mm. And also you can get one of his best weapons really early on in the game if you remember to go back and get it. Okay. Because there's a bunch of locked doors in this dungeon. Oh! Yeah, isn't that cool? Okay. It kind of looks 3D. Just, they did a really good job of the sprite work on that. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're talking about now. Yeah. So this is where I did grinding off screen, and now I'm just showing you all this shit because it's cool. So these are the easiest ones as far as straight up damage is concerned. Um, like, they'll do Cure 4 three times and then uh, they'll not be able to do it anymore because they don't have any AP left. Uh, what Cure 4 does is fully restores hit points. Hmm, fun. Yeah. But, like, you notice I did 536 damage, about half its health in one turn, so yeah. that is doable. And they don't do a whole lot of damage when they attack. No, I saw even Cat seem to take it just fine. Yeah, yeah. And if Cat could take it fine, it's not that bad. Yeah. I mean, there are some enemies that look at Cat funny and she falls down dead. Yeah. Yeah, I think the only person who has worse defense than Cat is Nina, but she's always going to be in the back row. Yeah. Because that's what you do with spellcasters. <laughs> oh, I guess it's just twice that they can cast it. Oh, look at that. Yep. But yeah, it's it's pretty easy to beat these ones. Um, not right away, like, not immediately when you get Grandpa the Whale, but, like... That's not the reason you come here. Damn! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of experience. That's a lot of experience. <laughs> this is the best leveling spot in the game until you reach, like, the final dungeon. Okay. Oh, I'm guessing that's a fishing spot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here. Um, I don't think I actually do anything there. I just wanted to show it. Okay. Because getting that treasure chest is a bitch, and it's only, like, I don't even remember what it is. It's nothing important. Yes! Isn't that cool? <laughs> I gotta say, I think I like this a lot better than just a palette tool. Uh-huh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so this is how you beat these things easily. Because these are a lot harder to beat with just straight-up attacks, because they have a higher defense and whatnot. But they are weak to death. Oh! <laughs> and they give you more experience. Also, they give you a full heal item. You know... I love JRPGs because they can say sentences like, they are weak to death. Yes. <laughs> I would assume most leaving things are weak to death. Most of them are. Except like jellyfish. They're not weak to death. Yeah. They're, they're strong against death. Yeah, they are weak to turtles. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And uh, I think... So there are two other monsters on this island. Um, one of them is a giant fly, which I think I show. Uh, and the other is the strongest monster in the game, mm. uh, which is called a G-slime. That is a palette swap, swap of the original slime, except it's gold. And there are usually two or three of them in a group. Mm. And they are the strongest monster in the game individually. Mm. Uh, or at least I... Th mm, that's I guess that's debatable. There is a... There is a Deathbringer thing, which is a, a guy, a skeleton rider on a horse, mm. um, and that might be stronger, but it's up there. Yeah, G slimes are fucking nasty. So what you do with G slimes is, you see that 48 AP bug has? Mm -hmm. You use the G dragon, which you get later, and it just it takes out 999 hit points and kills them. Oh, okay. Or. Actually, I'm not sure it kills them, but I think it brings them very close to death. Okay. And so you use, like, Fireball with Blue or something afterward. So it's a one-two punch. Yeah, more or less. But, like, in the meantime, they can kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so they're very dangerous creatures. <clears throat> uh, also, I think I've fought them before now, because... If I'm not mistaken, I have an army glove equipped on Cat, um, and an army glove is the best hand wet, or hand armor in the game. Mm. Uh, it raises attack power and defense. Okay. And it's really nice. Very nice. So that's one of the reasons Cat didn't take huge amounts of damage from the the giant gong head. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> At some point, and I don't remember when, I do... Oh! Yeah, there we are. Chorking, they're called, I think. Hmm. Um, so, the trick to these ones is you only do, like, one or two damage with your attacks, but there are some abilities um, that ignore defense. Okay. Like that. <laughs> oh, so they're like Shedinjas. Yeah. Where they are immune to so much damage, but they have no HP. Exactly, they have, like... Yeah, I think okay. these things have about 20 to 30 hit points, so okay. if you attack them head on, it's going to be a long fight, uh, but there are ways around it, obviously. Reminds me of the Eaters in Cyber Sleuth, <laughs> where they have crazy high defense. Yeah, but not a whole lot of hit points, right? So bring anything that ignores defense and you can just fuck them off. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember why I came back. Forget your keys? Probably. The blow loser go Oh, you're just warping. Oh yeah, yeah, that was it. <laughs> to save time, ha <laughs> ha! Uh, now we're going to tunnel. Yes, okay, so we are progressing the story now. Yeah, there's a. Uh... Okay. So this again is the part of the game that people hate. Because we don't just go to Tunlin and solve the issue in Tunlin. We have to go to Tunlin figure out what the issue is, which we already know is the queen being fat. And... Yeah. And we have to talk to a specific NPC, get a cutscene, and then they send us to Mushroom Island, mm. which is a dungeon. It doesn't have a boss, but it is an irritating dungeon. Oh, and you do require Sten again. I forgot. Because it has a whole bunch of those pegs. Mm. So he is necessary for that dungeon. <laughs> Fucking translations. <laughs> uh, silly stuff. Oh, you brought the famous flute? Fuck you. Yeah, you can't talk to us with that, bitch. Bitch. You think you can come here with your old nasty ass flute, bitch? <laughs> you need the new hotness, not that old shit. Get yeah. that old shit out of here. She is so spoiled. She always makes things difficult for others. Yep. No, I... It's been languishing in the treasury of these monkeys who don't take care of things. And so it looks like shit. And they're like, oh, that's the famous flute. Gross. You didn't put your lips on that, did you? <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's been of a monkey's butt. I'm glad we were able to justify that translation error. Ew. <laughs> Ew okay, okay, you can, you can come in, just, just put that away. Uh-huh. Preferably in a bag that 
can't get smells out. Why are you playing it? Ew. You ew, have to play ew. that to talk to us. That's disgusting. Ew, no, no. You can just talk to us. I Stop mean, the, it. these are the same people who jump down a toilet for a ring. So, <laughs> I guess. I guess they're used to this kind of shit. They are also the same people who ate cockroaches and and flies and fucking worms. So, what has this become? Three furries, one cup? What the fuck? Something like that. Yeah, this is the best fetish game. <laughs> Some weird bullshit going on in here. Yep. Oh, I'm so glad we don't get one of those cow folk in the party now that I just said that out loud. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. It's I'm okay. Glad. They're oxen. That... Doesn't, doesn't make change it anything. <laughs> that changes nothing. <laughs> yep. All it is is one person being horrified and another person on the back going, um, actually. Uh huh. That doesn't help. Yep. That's not good. Ox poop. Ah. Um, ox poop. Ah. <laughs> we already have the monkey butt flute. Yep. We are done with creepy butt stuff, and I just remember cat doesn't wear pants. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, so here is one of the last people I'm going to be getting for my uh, town. Mm. This person does nothing for you. Um, they say they're a guard for your town. But they don't actually guard your town because your town doesn't need to be guarded. Uh, and I only recently found out there's a cutscene. Mm. Involving that character, if, mm. if you have a certain party member. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't remember if I show it in this playthrough or another one, but yeah, it's it's really neat. And I just realized, Ryu is the only member of your party wearing pants. Uh, yeah, I guess Rand is not. It's kind of a toga thing. Yeah, and Blue doesn't need to wear pants. Nah. Well, she says she doesn't need to wear pants, <laughs> and no one's gonna argue with Blue. I mean, what's she gonna wear? A long sleeve? Well, she could wear, like, a skirt thing. Well, yeah, she does. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't go down all the way, but... <laughs> and Cat just outright refuses. No, Cat, Cat is definitely the one, the rebel. She's actively not wearing pants. Yeah. And the best thing about it is I don't think she realizes that it's not... It, it's looked down upon not to. <laughs> She's just like, yeah, whatever. Because, like, there's a there's another Warren clan um, later in the game, and he doesn't wear pants either. Mm. So I think that's just the way cat folk in this game are. They do wear pants in later iterations of Breath of Fire, though. Okay. So it's specifically at this time period that they're going full Disney. Yeah, exactly. 